talking about um, Ali, I guess if people can look at it was you were in the government with his father, Mark Bongo. You're related in, so, in some way to Ali Bongo. And probably we could say the marriage has broken up at the moment. How can you differentiate yourself from the previous government and now over the last 50 years? How can people see you as being different considering you were in government previously? The fact is that they're seeing me different. Now, if you need some explanations, let me tell you that uh, um, Africa in general, after the independence, everybody, west, east, inside, say that we have a, a state, but not nations. So we should create a single party, an authoritarian um, party, in order to make the unity to create a nation among this, uh, you know, during, after the Berlin Treaty, uh, they distributed the country with a map, you know, sometimes cutting uh, some tribes uh, in, uh, uh, into two or three, sometimes even cutting villages, you know. As you know, after the Berlin Treaty, they came to try to harmonize all the things. Uh, but uh, in general, it was said that to create, as I told you, a nation, to avoid nepotism, to avoid tribalism, to avoid corruption, to avoid all these bad things, we should have a strong power. But it was exactly the contrary which happened. Instead of reducing all of this, they have accentuated these various problems. Tribalism, nepotism, um, divisions, uh, uh, divide to rule, etc., etc. Then after the Berlin Wall, the fall of the Berlin Wall, many decisions was taken. First of all, the necessity to have multipartism. And many national conferences were organized, mainly in the French-speaking countries, in order to create the multipartism. Why I'm telling you that? Because in the beginning, it was an agreement. So we were there with this agreement. Then, after the creation of the multipartism, a constitution was adopted by consensus, which was the constitution of 1990, 1991, with various bodies, organs, to create not only the multipartism, but also the beginning of the de a democracy. Then, after that, Slowly, 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 they came back. Slowly, slowly, they come back. We cannot enter to the 21st century like a crab, you know, moving, you know, moving back. No, we can't accept that. Nobody will accept in the world that the African countries move back to the pre previous system. Uh, the African Union itself has adopted, uh, they have adopted a charter which is called the Charter of the Good Governance, you know, of election. This charter admitted now that the values which was considered in the past as Western values are now universal values, accepted totally by the African Union uh, organization. Uh, then those who don't want to move in that, into that direction, they will lose, definitely. That's the problem. But how can, different uh, would it be under you over the past 50 years when you were in government? No, that's not the problem. You can be in the government and refuse 
what is happening in London for the moment in Great Britain um, between Boris and his fellow comrade. They have decided not to have the same, the same position. Those who wanted uh, uh, to quit and those who wanted to remain. It is normal that when you have crucial decisions to be taken, you should take them. And uh, don't be surprised at all that we want to enter in modernity, not to move back to the former century. That's, that's, the, prop that's, the, that's the issue. It's not to say that I have been with you, I have been your friend, I have been your brother-in-law, I have been, I don't know what, what this sort of things which are circulating among the world. It's not a question to say that you are my brother or you are not my brother. It's a question of uh, a fundamental issue for the country, a fundamental issue for uh, Africa. We are going, you will read it there. I am saying that um, paraphrasing Martin Luther King that I had a dream. The dream is to see Gabon as a country free from fear, free from needs. And I show through my project how can you move from this dream to a reality, a concrete reality. That's the purpose of that, uh, uh, that, that, that project. You know, we have in that project, we have values, the same which you can find everywhere today. The values which has been adopted by the African Union. Then we have some principle, objectives, the same. This is the framework, clearly. So to move from this vision to this obstacle, this uh, principle, objectives, I am describing, sometime in details, how to bring Gabon out of fear and out of, uh, I mean, uh, out, out of fear, fears and out of needs. It is clear. Talking about one of the fundamental issues in terms of what you're saying about bringing Gabon out of fear, out of needs, corruption obviously is, is one of the key factors for a lot of people. How would, under your <coughs> government, would you tackle corruption where the rich are not getting richer legally and the poor are getting poorer? Well, first of all, the problem of corruption is a very difficult issue bef because it seems that the whole continent has been affected by this disease. You know, I have been told that uh, you came from Nigeria. I don't know if it's true or not. Yes, correct. So, you know, I've been investigating myself also. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know how your country, Nigeria, was absolutely infected, totally infected by the corruption, mainly at the time of uh, uh, President uh, uh, Abacha, mainly at that time. Lot of uh, uh, information, right or wrong, has been circulated, circulating about this corruption. Today, Nigeria has improved drastically the situation. I'm not saying that the corruption, the corruption has been eradicated totally. But you can see from there to now how the situation has been improved. That's how we are thinking that if it has, been, it has happened to a country such as Nigeria, it could happen everywhere. All of the African countries could, should eradicate the corruption. You showed Nigeria as an example. Um, Gabon relies heavily on oil. Nigeria, another country that you've shown in terms of tackling corruption,
has been affected as well by focusing a lot on oil and they're looking to diversify their economy. Gabon is not except, except exemption from that problem. Gabon needs to as well diversify its own economy. What would be your economic model to help the economy of Gabon to diversify it? Well, first of all, I want to tell you that uh, there is what is called um, Dutch disease. Dutch disease, you know it. It means that when you have oil or gas somewhere, all the remaining, all the rest of the economy disappear because it has been discovered in uh, the Netherlands uh, and it has been called now the Dutch disease. That's what happened in Nigeria. Nigeria was one of the first producers of oil, of cocoa, of all these uh, raw materials, natural raw materials and agriculture. And suddenly all this has disappeared. That's the Dutch disease. In Gabon, we, of course, faced similar problems. The oil industry and the rest has killed the agriculture, for instance. A region such as the northern region was based on agriculture. We had uh, cocoa, coffee, you know, and we exported at that time a lot of these product, products, such as Cameroon, such as uh, the Ghana, such as uh, several other countries. All these have totally disappeared, totally disappeared, which means that we have to fight against that. Taking again the example of Nigeria, you know that in the middle, uh, middle belt of Nigeria, they have been creating, uh, um, attracting investors, including those coming from Zimbabwe and South Africa, to invest in the middle belt in agriculture. The present president of the African Development Bank was the minister of agriculture. Uh, and he was the one who decided that to, to, and he succeeded in doing that. If Nigeria succeeded there, why shouldn't we not succeed? I'm always giving the example of Nigeria uh, because it's uh, not only a neighboring countries, but uh, uh, we have a lot of similarities. So we have again to develop agriculture, for instance, in order to diversify our economy. Let me give you... We'll, we'll have to get very quick because we're coming. So if you could be very quick with your answer because we have to move on to two quick questions before okay. we wrap up this program. Let me tell you that the population of southern Cameroon are exactly the same of northern Gabon. The same. We have the same lands. And in addition to what the, the Arab land, uh, Arab land in Gabon are 100 percent, while in Cameroon is only the southern of Cameroon. But same tribe, same land, same arable fertility of the, the land. Why Cameroon is exporting foods in Gabon till Angola? You know, about 20 trucks of oil, of uh, onion, 20 trucks of uh, uh, potatoes are crossing Gabon through Cameroon. We imported every day about that, in addition to the um, banana plantains, to the, the rest. Coming from Cameroon, how Cameroon succeeded and not Gabon? It's a problem. And the young man is going to, um, you know what we call the young man, is your friend, Ali. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking, I'm joking. Never met him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. And uh, this man is going to Malaysia to find a project for, uh, for Gabon. Ignoring that Cameroon on your legs have a successful story. I have to quickly, if you could just answer the next two questions very quickly, because we're running out of time. 
teachers had strikes. Um, what's, we saw strikes in Gabon. What are you going to do in terms of education here in Gabon and as well the health sector? I consider that the only riches of countries is human being, human resources. It's not me, it has been several, said several times in the world. A French uh, writer which is, uh, said it before me. And many others have said that before me. The success, the resources, is human resources. Take the case of China, take the case of India, take the case of Nigeria, etc., etc. It is the human resources which constitute the richness. The richness is correct? Of, of countries. So we have to invest massively on human being, which means that education for all, we propose a free education in the primary system, in the primary school, Education, if people are educated and not cured, then we lose. So education, health, electricity, water supply, roads, to be, to have a, a decent, a decent house. This is the main objective. Instead of going to to create marinas, to create the, you know all these stupidities, let's take care of our population. Finally, from your end, from your part, will the elections be free, fair, and transparent? Well, the election with such people who are entering in the history as a crab, it is absolutely out of their mind. It is absolutely impossible for them. You know, we have been ruled for half a century by a single clan, by a single family. And they expect to continue that like that forever. It is absolutely impossible. As I told you, you cannot enter in the 21st century like that. Absolutely impossible. So they know that the only way to continue to perpetuate the system is cheating, is not having free and fair transparent election. Only otherwise, it is totally impos impossible. Each of the candidates can defeat him. I, I, if we have a transparency, each of us, not only me, we will defeat him. Okay. Mr. Jean-Ping, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.